Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are here in Maui, Hawaii, and I, my name is Federal Postal Judge full colon David hyphen Win full colon Miller. I punctuate my name with a full colon because it creates a prepositional phrase. I use a hyphen to make my David Win a compound fact, and then I follow that with a full colon to identify my surname, which is Miller. So it's for the David Wynn of the Miller family because Focolans are prepositional phrases to express a fact. You also use it in your digital time, your Focolans. Now, what we're gonna do today, we're gonna have five different segments here. And we're gonna go through the parts of speech and explain what the parts of syntax are when it comes to writing. We are then going to explain how the parts of a sentence are constructed. Then we're going to go to a, the way that the federal government has created over 40 million mortgages under the fraudulent conveyance of language under the laws of Title 18, 1001, and Title 15, Section 1692E under false and misleading statements. Title 18, Section 242, Deprivation of Rights Under Coloring of the Laws. And we're going to explain the sentence structure from the mortgage and how it is used as fraud. We're going to explain the sentence structure used by the attorneys to support the mortgage, how they are using fraud. And then we're going to explain how the banking system uses your money to make you both the borrower and the lender. Not get, so they don't have the jurisdiction or the venue to foreclose your property, only be a servicing agent for that conclusion. So what we're gonna start with first is the parts of speech. Now the parts of speech are, you have, we're gonna use a numbering system zero through nine. The numbering system is to identify each parts of speech and how it appears between one word and another. And when we, do, we, when we take documents and we go ahead and we put the, the numbers on top, of the doc, on top of the words, it's because to write the words out, to write the parts of speech word out on top of the words would take up too much time and would be too confusing. So we use a number substitution, which we will go through. Now we use zero as a conjunction, and there's two conjunctions in the, in the English language. And is a command, and the word or is an option. Now the word, uh, the adverb, we gave a one, because the adverb is used more than any other word, and the adverb is a modifier. It modifies the speed of which something is going to be modified at. Now the adverb will modify a verb, which is thinking or motion. So when you have a one in front of a two, it's an adverb creating a verb. Now three is used for an adjective because an adjective represents color, opinion, and modifier or modification which means you're gonna change something or try to influence an individual's ability to think by coloring it. If you color something and you change it, you're actually committing perjury because you're injecting your own prejudice or your uh, opinions based on how you're going to describe it. And the word describe, D-E means no, ascribe means to write. So you're changing the condition to create a no written document. Now the adjective will always appear in front of a pronoun, just like we have the word black. Black is a fact. The word pen is a fact. You put black in front of pen and it means black pen. Black is an adjective. And it prejudices the word pen. You could use the word cobalt because, or carbon, carbon pen, because carbon is black. And it also is a, a shade of black. There's 1,200 shades of black, so you can basically say there's 1,200 ways to modify the word pen by just using one color, and color is an infinity of an opinion. Now, in the presentation of these numbers, the positional lodial fact 
which is five, six, and seven. The position of a word identifies the, using the ABC alphabet. Now this is between two individuals when they come together, they have to agree on what alphabet they're going to use. If we were in China, we'd be using the Chinese alphabet. If we were in Russia, we'd be using the Russian alphabet. Or in France or Germany, or if we were in Arabic or Indian. So the, the communication skills have to be established as to what alphabet you're going to be using. Then you have to have, take that alphabet and spell out your word. Now if we're going to use uh, the English language, this would be a pen, P-E-N. If we're going to write it in, in Hawaiian language, it would be called a penny, P-E-N-N-Y. If we're going to use it in Spanish, it would be called a scribola. So the spelling of the word would then change. And then we have to give a term to the, to the word spelling and identify what the pen is used for. The pen is used for writing. So we're going to give it a definition that both persons agree upon in order to communicate with each other. Now the position is always followed by a condition of loader, uh, lodio. Now lodio, L-O means location, D-I is original, and A-L is contract. That's called the parse of a word. Now when you, we, if we're going to say for my pen, for your pen, for her pen, for his pen, for our pen, every time I change the, the lodial position of ownership, I change the definition of this pen. If I say for your pen, for my pen, for her pen, for his pen, I'm changing the, the preposition, the position, and I'm also changing the ownership. So therefore the fact is going to continue to change. I can do this 900 different ways because there are 68 prepositions and 38 articles. When you multiply those out, they come to 2,000, divided by two is 1,000 minus about a hundred words that would never come together and be used in a logical explanation. So therefore there's about 900 logical explanations to identify this one object. When you take two objects using a prepositional <coughs> phrase and you bring them together, now you have for the black of the pen or for the pen of the black. You have black which is a fact and you have pen which is a fact. Well, 900 times 900 is 810,000 variables that you can write this combination into. When you add a third word to this, for the black of the pen with the writing, now writing would then become a condition of a fact. And now we have 900 times 810,000 gives you 720 million. For the, for the black of the pen is with the writing on the paper. Now we have four words, 900 times 720,000 is 640 million variables. So you can see this can become a very large, complicated document when you're going into a mathematical certification to create a correct prepositional phrase or a correct structural sentence, better known as a parse syntax grammar. Now we, number eight, the five of a position always comes in front of a six, which always comes in front of a seven, which is a fact. Now when we went to school, they taught us to use a preposition. Pre meaning no position. An article, which is spelled A-R-T, which is a vowel and two consonants, which means no contract. So if you had no position and no contract, you'd have a noun, N-O-U-N, which is no-no. Now if you have a no-no, you have nothing. So they lied to us when they went to school. So we had to create a new Dyna uh, paradigm of communications called the position lodial fact. The next factor was the past time in the future time. Eight comes, the past always comes before the future and eight always comes in front of nine. So the, it was a natural phenomena of the way that the, the numbers fall in because an adverb comes before a verb, an adverb comes in front of an adjective, the adjective comes before the pronoun, the position, the lodial, and the fact are always kept together as a five, six, seven, and the past always comes in front of the future. Now the past can be a word used as from, or the word, any word ending in ed would represent a past. If you have a, this, when we went to school, they taught us that a sentence must be one thought. So we have a, we have a one venue or one condition of thought, which is the correct parse syntax grammar. However, in the world of fraud, which means you're going to have um, 
going to the store from the house. Now we have two different time factors of from and to, which is now a lie because now we have two conditions of time and it's no longer a single thought sentence. So this generates when you're into fraud, fiction, lies, perjury, false, guessing, per presumption, assumption, these are the, the world of our court systems, attorneys, and lawyers. And this is what's been going on on this planet for 8,500 years. Now on April 6, 1988, the mathematical interface on, the, on grammar was, was perfected by myself. And it was published. And two days after that, the United States Secret Service showed up at my door and said, you realize what you've done? You've just disqualified every treaty, trust, and contract between 5,000 languages for 8,500 years. When the world learns of how this mathematical interface will correct the world, there will be a world reset on communication skills, banking, international contracts, trade agreements. And so it's going to impact the way the entire planet has to do business. Now, man has never gone to war over a math problem in the history of mankind. By bringing communication skills into a mathematical procedure where we have the value certified both frontwards and backwards in every single sentence that we write. Example, for the bridge is over the water, for the water is under the bridge. Over and under are opposite prepositions in both sentences represent the same picture. Now, if we drop the word for, which was a position, and we just say the water is under the bridge, the bridge is over the water. The becomes an adverb making bridge to be a verb. Is is an adverb making over to be a verb. The is an adverb making water to be a verb. There's no such thing as a water over or bridge verb because of the modification is, which is represented by an adverb. All positions and all lodials or all prepositions and all articles, when used as independent words, become adverbs. And therefore, they create modification, which is your change and your perjury, and will then destroy the contents of your contracts. Now, the second position we're going to do here is with the instructions on how a sentence is created. Now, a sentence goes through, we use a minimum of seven positions. We use the preposition for to start every sentence in this program because for is the strongest of the positions to start a sentence out with. We've looked at all 68 positions and we've looked at all 38 articles. And we've reduced the program to the words a, and, the, this, these. Uh, sometimes we use the word through, T-H-R-O-U-G-H, -H, or T-H-R-U, and, but this is the lion's share of 99% of the prepositional, of the articles that are used in the, in our grammar. Also the word A-N appears in front of any word that starts with a vowel. That's one of the exceptions to the rules. Now, when you're con constructing a sentence, the rules and regulations of constructing a sentence are the same rules and regu regulations that even a fiction court must go through to establish an individual's ability to stand trial. So what we've done is we have perfected that all sentences that are used in every one of, every one of our documents, and we average about 60 to 100 different sentences, but each sentence qualifies under the rules of what a court has to establish in order to be a court. And the very first thing a court must establish is the word knowledge. Does the person have the knowledge to understand what is being said to them? If I was speaking to you in Japanese or Chinese or, 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 or Russian, and you only understood English, you wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to communicate with each other. So therefore, we wouldn't have a knowledge communication between us. It would require us bringing in an interpreter to stand in and do the translations. But what we're doing here is, the first thing that a court has to establish is your cause. What is the knowledge or educational limitations of all individuals in the courtroom? Once you have established that you have a knowledge, you then have a consequence which would be of the. 
For the is your, is your knowledge, of the is your consequence. And the consequence is going to be how many facts have you established through your knowledge. Once your knowledge is established as facts in your brain, it's like a computer. In order to bring any information out of your brain or out of a computer, you have to think. And thinking then becomes the verb of action. You have is is a singular and are is a plural. So the verb thinking now becomes your only, these are the only two verbs in English languages, is and are. Running is not a verb. Jumping is not a verb. Driving is not a verb. Trespassing is not a verb. Parking is not a verb. You have to think before you can do these, before you can do these conditions of a fact. So when it, the sign says no parking, no is an adverb making parking into a verb. So they've lied because you can never create the negative condition of any state. You can't create a negative condition of a fact. So by saying no parking, that's an oxymoron. And it's against the law. Now when you say against the law, that's a prepositional phrase. Against means no contract. The is an adverb, I'd rather against is a, prep, a position, the is an adverb making law a fact. So if you're against the fact and you're using no contract or no trespassing, no is an adverb making trespassing a violation of the use of that is a condition of state. It should say for the trespassing on this land is with the fee of the $5,000 or for the parking of the cars with the fee of the $500. These are performance contracts which are positive. If you have a positive performance contract, you then have the ability to say, I gave you a positive performance, you agreed to trespass, you agreed to perform, and therefore you have a duty through this performance contract. Now, after you establish your thinking capacity to move the fact backed up by the knowledge, you have to create a possessive. With is your, is your position of a possessive. And the possessive is used, we use the word claim because gold miners filed claims. They didn't file mortgages. They didn't ask for permission. When they discovered gold, which starts with the word AU, they have an authority. And so they filed gold claims. Then they had to make a decision on to what the claim is. Is it a positive claim or a negative claim? Did they have a damage, which is negative, or did they have a equity, which is positive? The second part, now that you've established with, with as a possessive, you now have a contract term using of the. And now you're gonna go ahead and take this possessive and you're gonna put it into a contract term to define the plus or negative of that contract term. This sentence could be as small as seven, seven words, or seven facts, or as large as a 200 word sentence, which I have, which I place in all my documents. Just to show that when you're, you're going through a mathematical procedure to get to the conclusion from the beginning of a fact, there is a, a path that you have to follow. Now, after you have a with of, you go back to another with, which is a possessive of the laws, rules, regulation, codes, duties. And then you have to assign the authorization of the word by. By is the position to give the authorization, the author, the authentic of who created this document. Who wrote this sentence? And authorization always runs backwards. So the last word in the sentence becomes the authority. Now if I read this sentence backwards, by would become for, and of would become with, and with would become of, because those are the opposite prepositions, just like over, under, in, out, through, around. So if I read this for and authority of the laws, rules, regulations, and codes, now I can go back up, pick up my verb is or are, with the contract terms of the possessive claim, uh, with the consequential facts by the cause or the claimant's knowledge. In this case, we would have a claimant who would be the, no the individual who would have the knowledge. So reading the sentence both frontwards and backwards has the same volition and the same sense as it did frontwards, and that's how you can certify.
that the sentence was written correctly in the first place. And which we, what we do is, if you do grafting, now the easiest way to learn how to do sentence structure is to graft it by taking all your positions and isolating those. See, now I have all the positions. Now I have the same uh, lodio throughout. The only exception here is and because we're in front of a vowel. But if this is going to be the, then it's going to be gender neutral. If it's this, it'll be specific first person. If it's these, it'll be specific plural. So as you're using, you can use the word a, which is also specific plural, uh, specific singular. You say for a cause of a consequence is with a possessive of the contract with a law by an authority. See, if I change the article, the sentence still makes sense because the article is going to show you in ownership. Ownership specific, first person, gender neutral, or plural. But your, but your uh, prepositions are going to be your, uh, the correct way by which this is mathematically certified. Now my computer that I use to write these documents is, has, I guess you could say, artificial intelligence because it has learned through all the thousands of contracts that have gone through it that if I use the wrong preposition or I put two wis together, two ofs together, that I'll get a red line, a green line, or a blue line under my prepositional phrase telling me that's not the standard by which you have established in this computer and I'll have to go back and look at it a second time. And if I put too many facts in, but I don't have enough prepositions, it means the sentence was written in incorrectly in the first place. And I've got to go back, and maybe a word has been out of a location where two words were backwards. Because an individual, I have, uh, I'm ambidextrous. I write both my left hand and my right hand. I write frontwards and backwards, and in both directions with both hands. So. My ability to see things backwards as well as frontwards simultaneously, if I'm moving too fast, I might put two words inadvertently in the wrong place and when I read it back or I read the sentence backwards to check the math to see if it was done in the correct format, going forward, it now shows me that I did something wrong and I've got to go back and reread it. I might even take a day off, come back the very next day and go and read it again with a fresh thought I'm going like, that doesn't make any sense at all. And I'll pull out a word or put in a word or get the book of synonyms and put a correct synonym in there and line it up so it makes sense. So that the entire document, just like when you write a story, you have to be in a, in a, a flow with that storyline. So any questions about sentence structure or parts of speech? All right, the next thing we're going to do the laws were originally established, like the Roman Empire was around 3,000 years with the Latin. And before that, you had Arabic with the, with the Egyptian. You had Persia, which was a, uh, the ruling bank for 6,000 years between Asia and Europe. You had the Indian nations and the Chinese nations with 6,000 years of grammar. And the Persia was right in the middle of it all because everybody through the trade, what we call the spice routes or the trade routes. So in order to put this together mathematically, I had to study history going back to Gothics, which is roughly 8,500 years ago when language was first instructed. And then the parts of speech, just to identify the order of operations of the parts of speech took, took me six years of research. It was buried in Cornell University's dictionary, which is four feet thick, containing every word of every symbol in all 5,000 languages in written history. That's why it's a four foot thick dictionary. It's cost 6,000 bucks for that dictionary. But when I found out what the parts of speech were, if you go into a styles manual, they'll give you one definition. If you go into your dictionary styles manual, you'll get another definition. But when you go into Cornell University's dictionary, you find out about the time of the future and the past, as well as the parts of speech and how they were used. Now with 68 prepositions and 38 articles, we only use seven of the, of the positions 
and only five of the articles. And with that, we built this program. Now, the next thing I'm going to go over is the physical mechanics of what goes on in a courtroom. And then we're going to syntax a document from the, all of your mortgages. When you go into a courtroom, you're in a multi-plane area. Now, any level playing field of legal sports, whether it be in the Olympics or in the condition of a... I'm sorry, a little more. When you're in a position, if you've got a football, soccer, baseball, uh, tennis, ping pong, it doesn't matter what your game is, basketball, baseball, you always have a level playing field in sports because of the contest between individuals, skill sets. But when you walk into a courtroom, you have, mul you have five different planes that exist to break up the continuance of evidence within that courtroom. So what happens here is the judge puts himself on plane number one, which is higher than anyone else in the courtroom. And the judge says, well, if you look under federal rules of civil procedure 44.1, it says that the judge is a foreign entity sitting in a foreign jurisdiction. And all human beings that come into the courtroom are foreign people or foreign vessels. And they babble because of the communication skills that they, that they speak in in adverb verb, or adverb adjective pronoun, pronoun adverb verb, and pronoun adverb adjective pronoun. Those are four different concepts. Also, they have a concept of adverb verb, adverb verb, adverb verb, and they don't use any adjectives or any pronouns. So the judge sets himself up in his on his independent plane. Then they ask the witness to come up and stand in a, inside a box. A witness box is an area where the witness cannot be heard or seen and cannot present evidence. The jury is plane number three. A jury, J-U means outlaw or no law, and R-Y means contract. That's called par se, because the jury is, in the laws of the United States, require a 12-man jury. Well. One little difference is you have the, the jury box, but there's two different planes. Six people sit here and six people sit there. So you have two petite juries of six and six, which is not a 12-man jury. And they put it in a box, and if you look up the word jury box in Black's Law Dictionary, it says an area where people cannot see witnesses or hear evidence. So again, we're dealing with trickery, deception, and illusions. The, the clerk of the court is the individual that files evidence, puts stamps on, on documents, signs her name or his name across the stamp as the postmaster, the banker, and the clerk of the court. So who is the judge? Well, when you look at judges, it says see bankers and see postmasters. When you look at postmasters, it says, see judges and bankers. So who, is the, who runs the court? The clerk of the court runs the court. And the actor sits on, a, on the stage of the highest position. When you go into a, a theater, which you, you have your, your theater seating, which goes up, and then you have a stage. And an actor stands on the stage because the actor is on a contract. But the continuance of evidence between the actor and the people sitting in different levels of the theater are broken so that there is no insult between what is acting and what is viewing. Now the actor, ACT, is a vowel and two consonants, which means no contract. So there's no continuance of evidence between the actor and the audience. The same thing in the, in the courtroom. You have, there's no continuance of evidence between the actor and what is going on in the courtroom. Now, all the grammar that is used in the courtroom between the attorneys, the lawyers, the judge, are all fictitiously conveyed. Because in the world of fiction, 6 plus 6 equals all numbers in the universe, excuse me, 3 plus 3 equals all numbers in the universe in the world of fiction except 6. In the world of the fact, 3 plus 3 equals 6. And there can be no other conclusion to that statement. But if you say it is 2 plus 2 equals 4, T-O plus T-O-O equals F-O-R. 
TWO and TOO equals FORE. Did you hear what I said, what I meant when I said, what I said, what I meant, what I said? The point I just made to you is that if you get into an oral argument, the terminology of your definitions are lost in the, tra in the translation of sound. Therefore, Pharaoh in 4700 BC said, so it is written, so it shall be done. The reason for that is you have to write the facts down and use the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Otherwise, the information or the formation of what you are uh, saying to another individual will not be accepted. You have to be correct. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this first sentence. This comes from the Fannie Mae Freddie Mac mortgage. It's on page 12 of the mortgage. And what we, it contains 43 words. And I'm going to go ahead and syntax this using the number system on the chart here. Now, borrower is going to be a pronoun. Shall is going to be an adverb in the future time. So I give it a 1.9. Be then becomes a verb. So we give it a 2. In is an adverb making default to mean no fault as a verb. If now becomes a pronoun for any becomes an adverb making action ACT, a vowel and two consonants. So this becomes a no, a no contract because an act means no and ION is contract. So we have a no contract word used here as a verb. Or becomes a, a gender neutral, so that becomes a zero. Proceeds, proceedings. PRO means no, and proceeding is used here as a pronoun followed by a comma. Weather becomes the adverb making civil to be a verb, or again is a, is a neutral conjunction. Criminal also becomes a two. Now the reason to be criminal here becomes civil, if we see weather criminal or civil, or whether civil or criminal, or becomes a neutral uh, conjunction that whatever number appears before it would normally appear after it if a comma is used. If there is no comma, and this was be become, uh, let's say the word civil or criminal procedures, then this would be a two or would be a zero and criminal procedures would be a three and a four because we would have a compound, two compound facts. Is is an adverb. Yes, making begin to become a pronoun. Uh, no. This becomes a pronoun. Is begun becomes a, an adverb. That becomes a verb. In is an adverb, making lenders possessive of judgment to now become a pronoun. Could is a future tense adverb. Results means no contract, used as a verb. In is an adverb, making the word foreclosure. For means the word no, of closure. So if you have no closure, they're advertising that the contract doesn't use legal sentence structure. They're saying that there is no closure for the modification of grammar within this terminology. So your, your documents that you're in possession of become a verb, uh, in this case, an adjective. Proclosure becomes an adjective of the pronoun of. The is an adverb, modifies the property to be a verb. Now, PRO means no, PER is person, and TY is contract, no person contract. The reason they have a no person contract is if you look at your name on your mortgage, it's written in, adver it's written in all uppercase spelling called a nom de guerre. The word nom de guerre means you're a dead person, and the synonym of that is sodium. Or again becomes a conjunction. Other is an adverb, and OT means no of her. Material is an adjective. In paramin, IM means no, vowel two consonants again. ENT is contract, so you have no paired contract. That becomes a pronoun, no, no, no. Of is an adverb making lenders possessive to be a, 
a uh, possessive of the adjective interest and the pronoun if. Now interest, I-N means no. T-E-R is terra and E-S-T is contract. So you have no earth contract when you have interest. As a result of our suing the mortgage companies, all the banks in the United States and over 500 federal lawsuits filed at the Department of Justice and the Securities and Exchange Commission, the new language is to drop the word interest and charge rent on all your borrowed money. Same thing as the Arab worlds do with their money, with the Muslim religion. The word the now becomes a adverb, modifies the word property, P-R-O is null, P-E-R is person, and T-Y is contract, or is your conjunction. Rights is a pronoun, you have no rights. Now, when it comes to the word rights, I once said to a judge in 1985, I have rights, and the judge says, a fox has a right to eat, and a chicken has a right to eat. Enough said about rights. Think about it. The word rights now becomes a, a pronoun. The word under means no contract. Under is an adverb, modifies the adverb this, and security becomes an adjective of the word instrument. I-N means no. It's used also as a pronoun, S-T-R-U, means for, from the word construction, and ENT is contract. So you have no construction contract. Why is that? Well, if it's a no construction contract written in adverb verb, or adverb adjective pronoun, you have a color of security. Under now removes it from the plane of level playing field. So let's, we can read this backwards, except for one small detail, there's no facts in this sentence. So the, where we started off with 43 words, we now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 35, 36, 37, We have 57 mistakes out of 43 words in this sentence. So when we go to reconstruct this document, the document is actually saying that this is in error. You don't have a contract because all these words, when you look up the value of these words based on these numbers, you will not find a definition in the dictionary. Now if you take, what is the lawyer gonna do, or an attorney? The attorney is going to take this sentence and say, that makes sense to him. And we're gonna go ahead and say that this is the fact and we're gonna file a complaint from an attorney. So we went ahead and we wrote up the, the attorney's answer. A true, which now becomes a verb. Truth is not a verb. It's a condition of state. And is a conjunction. Correct copy becomes an adjective pronoun. Uh, of is an adverb, making which to be a verb. Is is an adverb, making attraction to be a no con attached. Is a no contract uh, adjective. The ED is in past time, voiding the now time of here to becoming a pronoun. As is an adverb, making exhibit to be a no contract. And because this is in quotation marks, exhibit A, it's been removed from the paper. Because the exhibit that they are presenting to the court is also void, the same thing as the lawsuit is void. Plaintiff, Emerson, purchased ED, in this case, that's a pronoun, all is the adverb of all two consonants. Not only does the word all is a very unique word because it can't be proven. It's of all and two consonants because you can never prove all. The only way to prove all is do a handstand. Let your feet dangle in a sea of space and hold planet Earth up in your hands. That's what all means. All rights then becomes the verb. 
and conjunction, interest. Again, no earth contract. And that becomes a pronoun because of the word and. So interest becomes the adverb, making in to become an adverb. And is a conjunction. To becomes the pronoun, thus the adverb, making real. RE means no. Contract as an adjective of the property, PRO, no, PER, person, TY, contract, as a pronoun, no, 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 set forth as an adverb verb in Emerson Corporation. And even though, now when they write corporation with an abbreviation and put a period, it breaks the continuance because it's a abbreviation. Then you go back here to the word by becomes a pronoun because it's a word used by itself and becomes a conjunction through its attorney. Here the word through is used as a pronoun. Its is an adverb, make an attorney to be a verb and this conjunction request means no quest as a uh, pronoun that default, again, no fault it's a no-fault judgment used as a pronoun. The word J-U means no, law. B is an adverb, hereby is an adverb, entered, E-N means no. It means no earth in past time. So that's used as a verb in favor, adverb, verb, of is an adverb, plaintiff, which becomes a dangling participle verb to end the sentence. So the attorney is saying that there, you pick out the key words. The attorney is saying that there is no fault, there is no earth interest, there are no quests, and there is no earth in past time. The judgments, the word judgment, when you look it up, says opinion. The letter O is used as a single syllable. P-I-N means to join together, and I-O-N means contract. So you have no joining contract. That's what an opinion is. It's called parse. Now, the book on parse is written by the Masonic, uh, Masons, and I'm a 92nd degree Mason. I rewrote the Masonic codes and putting two-thirds of all the missing words in dogma, agenda, or legenda, and when the book was rewritten, it's six inches thick, 18 inches tall, and one foot wide. It's in nine point print, by the way. So it's, it's a very, very complex book dealing, dealing with uh, many different parts of our world's belief systems. And the study of masonry deals with how to manage people and how to manage all the communication skills, government, banking, numerology, worldwide. Doesn't matter what your language is, all world leaders belong to the Masonic Order and they act together. So now when you write a sentence, the last word in the sentence has authorization, is supposed to be the authorization of that sentence, just like instrument here. It means no structured con contract. Well, does this look like a structured contract to you? Or the dangling participle plaintiff, which was the attorney who was represented by the law firm. What it says here is that this attorney is going to bastardize grammar to go into another bastardize, to fight for a bastardized grammar mortgage. And the two of them together are gonna to go in front of the word a judge, which means uh, J-U, comes from the word no law. The word justice, J-U means no law. S is speak, T-I is title, and C-E is judge. And judge title speaks no law. So by bastardizing the grammar and avoiding a prepositional phrase in all conditions here, you have, you don't, you have no facts here. Yes. The question was, what was the volition of a borrower to borrow money? All right, what they don't teach you is that the person they advertise on TV, you're taught by your parents, and we learn from example, to go out and borrow money to buy a home. 
If you're fortunate enough to pay cash for it, that's another thing. But maybe only one person in 100 actually pays cash for a home. The rest of the world goes out and they borrow the money. And the home is used as the equity to back up the mortgage itself. But a bank is not allowed to lend money from its investors or its depositors. So the bank has to take your mortgage and when they present you with a mortgage, I'll use this one here. This document here is your Fannie Mae, Freddie Mae mortgage. Now, even though you can't see the ABC alphabet from, your, from where you sit, you can see color. Anything that's pink is an adverb and anything that's green on this paper is a verb. All the words that are not colored are adjective pronouns. So if you're going to modify something, your white is going to be modified and your pink is going to be modified. The green section is going to be your facts used as verbs. You can look at this up close after the fact. And you can see how many times that this document written by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac has been modified to create a false document. These are just adverb verbs. And finally, we just identified the adverbs by just putting the pink on the paper. There's 100 adverbs out of 300 words. Again, 100 adverbs out of 300 words. And then when you get back to your signature, your autograph page in this document, the autograph page only has room for you to sign, not the bank. So it's a unilateral contract. So you go ahead and you sign this false document. And then the bank takes this false document to a treasury window where the person standing at the treasury window hands over to the bank $500,000 so you can buy your house. And they say, well, we got a mortgage here. And the person who is going to hand, you that, hand that bank that mortgage money is a second grade reading level or a fiction level like this reading level and doesn't understand what correct parse syntax grammar looks like. So they cut a check and give it to the bank. And the bank goes back and the ABC bank goes ahead and they make a deposit into the ABC account with the $500,000 and now under the laws of fraction banking because they now have a $500,000 deposit create $5 million. Then they take that $5 million on day two and they write a check for $500,000 and they run it back over under Title 15, Section 1635A of the three-day rescission law and they give the money back to the Treasury saying we canceled the mortgage, we canceled the loan, we're not going to borrow this money from this person's security account, social security account. Then they turn around and they go back and they write a note. N-O means no and T-E means contract, that's par se. So now we have a no contract note where the entire document has boxes. All the numbers are placed in independent boxes. All the written words are placed into another set of boxes. A box is an enclosed area under the rules of styles of all the world style manuals for advertising. And because the, the words and the numbers are kept separate by, the, by these independent boxes and the entire document is boxed and there's only room for one's signature. A signature starts with SI, like the word sign is SI, like the word simulation is SI. When you have an autograph, which is the way I punctuate my name here, full colon David hyphen Wynn, full colon Miller, that's called an autograph. That means authentic, author, authorization. And that makes me a fact. But when you simulate, which is cursive, Writing, the root word of cursive, is to do evil on others. And when you're doing evil on others by cursive and you angle your words, that's italicizing, which removes it from the paper. And if you're going to italicize what you've just written, you voided your contract. Now, I have a, have a document here. Now, here's a signature. You can't see it from back there, but it's scribbled. 
There's no AB, there's no way you can make out what this name is. You've got to scribble over here. Any two-year-old can scribble as equally as well. And by scribbling, these people are not taking jurisdiction for the words that they're placing on the paper. It is mandatory when we write a lawsuit that we go ahead and we place a flag on the lawsuit because this is a vessel in a sea of space. All vessels under maritime law must have a flag. The flag must also, uh, the vessel must also be accompanied by a stamp. Now by placing the postage stamp on this document, it's a federal stamp. It pays the freight to move this document between point A and point B. When I sign my name across, autograph my name across this stamp, and my clients autograph their name across this stamp, it makes you the postmaster authorized to transport this vessel from your home to the bank, or from your home to the post office to be sent out. Yes? What's the definition of a stamp? A stamp is a certification from the post office. And there's only one postal service on planet Earth, by the way. It's called the Universal Postal Union. The Universal Postal Union is responsible for all vessels on planet Earth, in other words, all nine billion people. They're responsible for all money on planet Earth and how it is exchanged between two countries or between the citizens within those countries. It's a one world order established on the 22nd of October, 1871. That's our modern day. In the past, in, in, uh, in Rome, you know, even with Jesus, you had, when a tax man came up to him, he says, give unto Caesar what is Caesar, give unto God what is, what is God's. What face is on Caesar's coin? So if you're going to use Caesar's coin for the value, and his military is going to protect the value of that coin for what it is, then pay Caesar his, his taxes to guarantee the value of it. If you go out to a tropical island in the South Pacific, they use coral beads. Some places they use different types of stone. Other, they, they had to have different types of exchange that were set up by their kings within their community because they were closed community. They had to measure value so that there was fairness between how much work an individual did and for trade within the community. People figure it out, believe it or not, when you get them together, they will figure out some form of an exchange system. The stamp is the exchange system to move freight between point A and point B, and like this is a vessel in the sea of space, it has to be transported. Now to make, to make this a valid document, you have to sign, autograph the back of it, just like you autograph your checks when you go down to the bank. The, the clerk, you hand them a, your check, which is your vessel. She stamps it paid. She hands you money and does banking. You have to endorse the back of it because it's a bill of lading, a vessel coming to the port of the bank. In a courthouse, the, the vessel comes to the port of the court. The court takes the vessel and it docks the vessel, puts a docket number on it, and now you can call it a document because you paid to dock the vessel. Then there's a service docking fee in, in, the, in the courts, it's I think $68 here, and in federal court it's $350. And when you go to the Supreme Court of the United States, it's a half a troy ounce of gold. And that's how they regulate what the docking fee is. So it's, about, it's all about maritime vessels. Now what exactly is the court? When you walk into a courtroom, this, is, this room here is my federal postal court today. We have documents signed, we have stamps on it, and we're explaining to you the mechanics of how this court, court process functions. The federal postal court can only do grammar. We can only syntax the words on the grammar for the fraud that is perpetrated on them. This becomes the forensic evidence that is necessary. Because when you hand me your mortgage and I have forensic evidence in my hand that a lie has been committed, and this is how many mistakes are taking place in every sentence. And then a lawyer wants to answer back to you and create the same lie. We have a conspiracy here. A conspiracy under Title 18, 1001, which is fictitious conveyance of language. Title 15, Section 1692E, which is false and misleading statements. 
carries a $25 million fine and 30 years in prison, Title 15, Section 78 FF. Now, because you are depriving or stopping witnesses and evidence from bringing correctness to the court, this is called a deprivation under coloring of the law, that's Title 18, 242. That carries a 15-year prison sentence and a $15,000 fine. Perjury is a $5,000 fine and five years in prison. Fictitious conveyance of language is a 10-year, $10,000 fine. When you take and you de deprive someone and reduce them through trickery, through this kind of trickery, it's called racketeering or RICO. Title 18, 1961 carries a 30-year prison sentence and a million dollar fine. And because you send it through the, this goes through the mail, and they, you're, the, the bank is sending you invoices which are fraud, as fraud as this are through the mail and asking you for money, that's mail fraud. That's Title 18, 1341. That carries a million dollar fine and 30 years in prison to extort money through the mail. When you get done with this, you got a 62-year prison sentence and uh, about 31, 32 million dollars total in fines that are going to be accumulated. All based on physical evidence. This is where you got to go out and prove you got a sore back or you got a bent fender on your car. These are written words on a piece of paper as forensic evidence. And these documents get bonded. You don't see a staple here, staple here because staple is not a bonding. It's a mechanical device. These are bonded with super glue. So you can glue it, you can stitch it with a, with a sewing machine because the pilfration of the holes are a, uh, like a fingerprint. Or you can rivet it with brass rivets. In, in 1998, I sent Janet Reno, yeah, Secretary of State Janet Reno, a letter about her false and misleading statements. She sent me back two sheets of paper with six 3 8 inch diameter brass rivets to hold two sheets of paper together. She says, you want to talk about maritime bonding? Well, here's maritime bonding. Only person in my entire career, that, uh, 34 years, that ever used brass rivets. But it just shows that she understood maritime law. So the bank goes ahead and they, they take your social security money and they lend it to you. The bank does not have title to the property. They do not have a note because it's, it's been written in modified grammar and all the numbers are boxed. They don't have a contract because it's bastardized, written in fiction language. This is straight lines and curved lines on a piece of paper called ART, A-R-T, which is a vowel and two consonants, which means no contract. So therefore, if you put things in perspective, the end that when they're using their words called real property, RE being no contract and property being no person's contract, they're telling you, they're advertising to you through parse that we have no contracts here, that you are a nothing. We nom de guerre your name. Now, if you look up nom de guerre as a dead person, sodium, and you look at the laws under maritime codes, can a dead person own land or write contracts? The answer is no, it's forbidden. So they go ahead and they bastardize the grammar so there is no contract. And no is an adverb making a negative adverb which makes contract into a verb fiction. Again, this goes into a vicious circle of modification and trickery and deception over and over and over again. And when we go ahead and we bring a correct parse syntax grammar document to the court, Everyone's familiar with the date 12-21-2012? The Mayan calendar, the beginning of the, the end of the world. The was an adverb making end to be a verb. The was an adverb making world to be a verb. We ended the world a verb that day. By ordering open Benjamin Franklin's Federal Postal Court, July 4th, 1775, retroactive under Title 42, 1986 for knowledge of a crime and the authorization to stop and correct it. Russell J. Gould and myself issued new oaths of office written in the correct parse syntax grammar. As two, we make corporation. And we also issued a new bank charter and a new court charter of how grammar will be used in a correct parse syntax grammar format to decisions on what documents are being filed in the court system.
And by doing that, using physical evidence and staying within the confinements of our charter, we now have the correct basis to stop and correct this type of a lie from happening. And this has been done 64 million times in the United States. Now, when the bank goes ahead and they, they, they take your, your mortgage, as soon as within three days of you signing your mortgage contract and your note, they then take and they sell that, they, what's called a securitized backed asset to Wall Street. Or they sell it to another bank, which bundles it up. The little banks will sell it to a big bank. The big bank will turn around and sell it to Wall Street, which then sells it to foreign investors as a securitized backed asset. Do they have title to your property? The answer is no, like you have title to an automobile. They can't produce the title, and when you ask the bank, where's my title, they're gonna say, we don't have to show it to you. That's because they don't have it. They are only a servicing agent. They have never risked any of their own money. They have only taken your own social security account and created an illusion to get the money from the treasury, which is actually a bank robbery, because this document is a lie. That means that they, had, they, they did not have a contract to take that money out of the treasury in the first place. That's the same as a bank robbery. And if they committed that bank robbery, that's a crime and it vacates their ability to contract with you. But they, they're out there every month and they're asking you for money. They continue to generate a no contract language and frustrate the individual. When you went to school, they did not teach you to read and write above a second grade reading level. Your, the first thing the teacher taught you when you were eight, nine years old, never start a sentence with a prepositional phrase so that you could never create a fact. You can have 99 prepositional phrases in a row and put one adverb verb in there. That adverb verb represents the number zero. And any number, no matter how large it is, multiplied times zero equals zero. Any number divided by zero equals zero, no matter how big it is. And so what they did here is they threw in and modified anywhere in the sentence and they created a lie. In the world of infinity lies, they have the world to lie. They can only be correct once with three plus three equals six. But in the world of lying, they have an infinity of the ability to be wrong, to teach us how not to read and write, to be wrong. And what, is, what was Pandora's box? You open Pandora and you, you release all the evils in the world. The Pandora's box was the mathematical interface on grammar. That it showed that man never went to war over a math problem in the history of of this planet over a math problem, but have been killing each other through modification of grammar and stealing property through false and misleading sentences since the beginning of written time. An individual's voluntary participation in the, I guess you could say the greed factor, the, the need to have a roof over your head, to need to supply your family with shelter is so strong you will do anything when we were 18 years old sex was on our mind we had to have a fast car good clothing and we they wanted us to sign up for our social security and you had to have your social security card in order to get a job to make the money to buy the car to get the clothes to attract the opposite sex then you had to build build shelter for the opposite sex and henceforth jump into a mortgage that you couldn't read and write because they never taught you how to read and write in school. So this thing has been a setup and it was established in 1888 called Securitized Backed Assets through Wall Street. So they knew what they were doing 135 years ago when they set this whole plan in motion. The thing that they never figured on with the wit was that we were going to break the code, publish the mathematical interface on grammar, and expose this. On January 6, 2008, I syntaxed Washington Mutual's mortgage. They were presented with the documents on Friday. They closed at $60 a share. On Monday, they opened at 10 cents a share and filed bankruptcy. The other 38 banks in the United States ran in and picked up, well, uh, Washington Mutual's bankrupt corporate mortgages 
and within six weeks lost 95% of all their value when they, got a, when they got their own lawsuit filed. And we send text, and they found out what they just bought, that all 64 million mortgages were a lie. And within two years, 25 million of the 64 million mortgages filed, filed for, were in foreclosure, putting our unemployment rate between 16 and 18% and throwing 110 million of our 350 million population into no housing. When the court summons you into a, when this fiction court summons you to come to court, they're asking you to leave the Hawaii territory. The courthouse is a foreign vessel in dry dock. Now we had a federal courthouse here in Maui in Waialuku Heights. It was built in 1888. But at the same time, securitized backed assets were authorized. It was the original post office turned into the federal courthouse. And did you know that on March 8, 2013, Hawaii became a sovereign country? It is no longer in bankruptcy with any country on planet Earth. On January 6, 20, uh, 2008, is when we filed the quantumized constitution, which I wrote for the Hawaiian Kingdom, and 22 components signed it. It was presented to the World Court at The Hague and it was authorized to be a correct written document. Three days later, under the Ritter rescission, under the rescission law, all banks in Hawaii that were offshore from foreign governments left the islands. We have not had offshore banking since January 9, 2008 to show you that you were always sovereign. Now, in 1893, when Hawaii, January 17, 1893, Hawaii was invaded by the United States. Queen Iolani was a 34 degree Eastern star working for the Mason across the street at Lodge Number One. And so when the senior Mason, who was the Postmaster General of Hawaii, told Queen Iolani to stand down, because the Mason, the Master Mason, captain of the military ship coming here from the United States, told him that he had orders to take over the Hawaiian Islands. She had to stand down and surrender Hawaii. But what was the condition of Hawaii? Hawaii filed bankruptcy with the World Bank out of Switzerland and the Rothschild family on the 22nd of October, 1871. Hawaii was under bankruptcy protection and the United States was under bankruptcy protection from the IMF. How does the bankrupt corporation called the United States of America invade the bankrupt corporation of the state of Hawaii, or the Hawaii territory? It can't, totally illegal. Has been illegal the whole time. The United States of America came out of bankruptcy on November 2nd, 1999, and for one year under maritime law of salvage, plus a 90-day federal law did not exist. The United States did not elect a president in 2000. They had to wait 90 days counting ballots. And on February 2, 2001, they became the United States of America Corporation. Anybody could have ran for president and been elected as president of the United States. Bush was appointed. But now, the United States is out of bankruptcy, but Hawaii is still in bankruptcy. A sovereign country can't invade a bankrupt corporation. Hawaii should have been vacated on February 2nd, 2000, but they weren't. So there's a lot of international law violations taking place here. A lot of maritime law violations taking place here. And we articulated and wrote contracts to these effects and we filed them at the World Court at The Hague. In 1997, I was commissioned by the Kapunas to write contracts mathematically certified frontwards and backwards. I'm not allowed to interfere with any religion, customs, policies, only to make sure that the math was correct. And then when we presented and did seminars for the people of Hawaii and showed them how grammar has to be so mathematically perfect that it can't be modified, written frontwards or backwards. It says the same thing. We had to certify as a group the 22 Kopunas, and we all worked together for months to make sure that every sentence that had to be said was said and presented in this Constitution. When it was sent to The Hague, The Hague only took five days 
of looking at what was correct and said the Hawaiian people are now correct. They have a constitution that is correct. And therefore, they have their independence. They don't need somebody babysitting them, like the United States. Even though we use the United States dollar here, we still have a constitution that says we can read and write, and all the documents that have been filed since those days have been all written in the correct parse syntax grammar. And we continue to police fraudulent grammar like this and bring it to trial. We contact the Department of Justice, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Consumer Fraud Protection Bureau out of Iowa City, Iowa, the Postal Inspectors, Criminal Division in Chicago, because this thi this, these things go through the United States priority mail as fraudulently conveyed documents. You know what they say? These are not government employees, therefore we don't have any jurisdiction. The least common denominator between all these things is the American flag. The FBI, the CIA, the NSA, the KGB. Yeah, we sent stuff to Russia in 1998. Shut down the entire postal service in the United States for two, year, for, for two whole weeks. Because the Russians came back and said, hey, we got a document here that's written in the correct parse syntax grammar, translated in the Russian in the correct parse syntax grammar. In six weeks after that, Russia collapsed. The Senate, the Congress, the legislature of Russia were taken over by the KGB and the Supreme Court were all put under arrest because of false and misleading statements. These documents, when they saw them, changed the entire politics and the Cold War ended. And Russia became a, became a capitalist country like the US. That was the first one to go down. When the United States government saw this here, the only thing they keep doing is is we're asking the criminals to police the criminals. But if you look at their oath of office for all these different divisions, they're written in adverb verb, italicized and placed into a box, which say nothing. So they're not authorized to carry a gun or a badge because of the fictitious conveyance of language that they have perpetrated on the American people. And to make sure that the American people can't read and write, they hire a principal, PRI, no contract individual, to to run roughshod over all the teachers of that institution to make sure that they do not teach the students the correct parse syntax grammar so that when they graduate from school they can be harvested. Anybody that had a 4.0 student grade point average, you knew that they, they were lying better than anybody else or could be brainwashed better than anybody else. And the guy that was flunking, his brain wouldn't accept an adverb verb lie. And that's why 38% of the students quit high school, because they will not accept a lie and they don't want to be brainwashed down that far. So what's happening today is my website, the website is dwmlc.com. Has five billion people on it studying how to use the correct parse syntax grammar in over 400 pages of testimony. So what we have here is we have corrected, positively identified how we are being cheated. We have the forensic evidence and we, we have the court system, the federal postal court now established so that we can take and bring correctness to our world of contracts. And if you've been listening to the political agendas that are happening and what's going on in the newspapers of Hawaii coming up to our election, it shows that they are fully aware that Hawaii became sovereign on March 8, 2013. On March 11, 2013, 170,000 tons of gold bullion was moved into Honolulu putting back the gold that was taken out on October 22, 1871 by the, by the World Bank to make Hawaii the new central bank of the Pacific. So there's going to be a lot of changes happening in the near future here. So we have an election coming up and our politicians are becoming aware of what's available. They're becoming aware of this grammar. They're becoming aware of the sovereignty. 
And little by little, they're starting to speak out and it's showing up in the newspapers. So I think by the time the election rolls around, we'll have enough educated people to stop and correct the wrongs that are going on out here. Stop the, the foreclosures that have taken place. Four years ago, I filed a lawsuit at the federal court and we froze all foreclosures in the Hawaiian Islands for 15 months because they knew they were wrong. There are no titles in Hawaii. There have never been titles in Hawaii since 1800. So how can they sell, how can they advertise and say that they have a title to the property and use it as a verb and use the word true and correct when this is a bold-faced lie, this is perjury. So this law firm is being prosecuted. This law firm asked for $20,000 in royalties to justify this and get paid for this. And we are suing them for false and misleading statements for $25 million and a $80,000 violation of what they're at through mail fraud because under Title 15, 1639A, they have to pay four times damages for how much they're trying to extort through the Rescissions Act. So I haven't brought up any names here today as far as specific organizations go because this is only about the parse syntax grammar. So we've used a, a little bit of a generalities to show you exactly what the mechanics are as we move forward. Also, we have, uh, you can look on the board over here, we had summons 14 different government officials. The police chief here in Maui, uh, several of the judges and the attorneys who have committed the fraud. We have the forensic evidence in front of us. And by bringing this to the table today as a federal postal court, we asked them to attend today to answer why they're supporting this document and accepting this language to be a fraud. Why are you using fraud and damaging and taking homes from people that you don't have title to, that the bank does not have standing for? And I have a... You can see through this plastic container here. This is how much paperwork one lawsuit has generated in one year. That's over a thousand sheets of paper. Every lawsuit that we do, we not only syntax the material, write a lawsuit that goes to the Department of Justice. We answer the lawyers. We prosecute the lawyers for the wrongs that they are doing, trying to steal the property. And we continue to, this goes back and forth every 45 days, where we sue them and they come back and they want to get paid for their violations, so we sue them again. And this goes on and on and on. Well, we have unlimited funds and, un and deep pockets to prosecute these people for the crimes that they are perpetrating against the Hawaiian people and people of the United States. The people that were summoned today, none of them showed up. I know who they are and none of them came today. You can look at the documents on the board there to see who was summoned. We have the green card return receipts for all of them that they were asked to be here today to answer why they're using fraudulent conveyance of language to extort property from the people and they failed to show up today. So there will be, there will be a follow-up lawsuits presented to the Department of Justice. This may be a community center, but it is also the federal postal court today because this is a real court. This is a real, uh, these are correct facts. Not real, but correct. The federal yes. Postal Court, and I have authorization as a federal postal judge to tip staff sheriffs, and a tip staff is an officer of a federal court to go out and make arrests. The tip staff must also know how to read and write in the correct parse syntax grammar. Their guys don't. I know they don't. I've already questioned them. They don't even know what the definition of the word tip staff means. And when I I went out and I questioned them. They're like deer in a headlight. So we have to get educated individuals that are willing to participate and become party to the a tip staff in, uh, authorization. Now there's, there's different organizations that are forming, 
But if you form an organization or a police organization in adverb verb, in other words, in this kind of grammar, you do not have authorization. You're just another fiction creating, suing another fiction, and the bigger fiction with guns and clubs are gonna go ahead and take you into custody because you committed fraud under Title 18, 1001, and Title 15, Section 1692E. We have the upper hand at this time because we have a signed confession from every single judge, attorney, lawyer, I currently hold warrants on 33 judges of the 92 judges here in the Hawaiian Islands. Volition. Okay, the volition, as I started before, was a person wishes to gain shelter, and the only thing they know how to do is to play, go to a bank and borrow money, but they don't know that the bank is not lending them their money, in other words, the bank's money, but going into their social security account to take their money out using a fraudulent document. So there's no closure for the volition of the crime of bank fraud that is being perpetrated on the individual wanting to borrow money. You are both the borrower and the lender, but the way it happened was a lie. Who committed the first crime, you or the bank? Well, the answer is clear, the bank. Because the bank created the document, the bank took it in and took the money out of the treasury. The Treasury is controlled by the Post Office. The Post Office controls all military branches in the government, Homeland Security, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, police forces, sheriff's departments. They're all controlled by the Post Office. Now the Post Office controls the Department of Transportation, which controls the port authorities. The port authorities control foreign vessels in dry dock. All courthouses in the United States are foreign vessels in dry dock. Now, because they have handicap ramps in every single courthouse in America, that means they are under treaty as a foreign entity to not disable the public. Disability comes under Title 29, Section 701 of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. So they are under treaty not to disable you and your ability to communicate in court. If you only speak Hawaiian or Filipino or Chinese or Japanese, and the judge is speaking in English, he must bring a translator into the courtroom. They do follow that procedure. But when they write in this manner, both the, both the, the, the mortgage contracts and the attorneys bring in this type of grammar, fraudulent grammar, to prosecute you for nothing, saying nothing, with no laws, rules, regulations, or codes, and you can't read and write, so you don't know any better, and they've got you so scared, they traumatized you with 10 times more made up charges when there was no charges in the first place about anything. But we have their signed confession for the criminal activity that they're perpetrating, but where are they doing that? They're doing it in a foreign vessel in dry dock. So if you've got a, a Chinese freighter out, in the, out, out here in the harbor, with a Chinese flag on it that represents a foreign country. What would happen if any of you walked onto that, that freighter and you didn't have a seaman's pass, you didn't have your immunization medical files with you that says you have no contagious diseases, that you did not have a bill of lading to enter that vessel with a contract that pays for the bill of lading or a ticket to be on that freighter, you would be arrested for trespassing, put in the brig, taken back to China and spend eight years in jail. What do you think happens when you walk into this box, into the, for, in, in, into the foreign vessel? The bill of lading for your ticket is written in adverb verb with 400 mistakes on it. So the only thing that they're going to they can charge you with when you walk into the courthouse is that you are a derelict vessel trespassing on their courthouse property. And you know what's the one thing standing in front of the judge? Your body trespassing. With, with Babel communications and no written contract. So they say, how much money can you afford to pay to walk out of our trespassing charge? And that's the long and the short of it, folks. Why do they keep getting away with it, though? Yeah. Because they're on a foreign vessel in dry dock. You're in their territory. You left the Hawaii Islands. You're in a foreign vessel, same as you'd walk into a different country's freighter sitting out in the, in the, in the harbor here. 
you were summoned to. But I didn't show up to their summons to have a word for my arrest now. For, for, um, Not necessarily. The, if you read the paperwork, it says, we may, and may is a future tense adverb, which means it doesn't exist in now time. It's in the future. Yeah, and so what they're doing is they're issuing an adverb verb document just like this is. Their warrant is written in, in all in boxes and written in adverb verb communications. So if you sue the warrant for fraud and misleading statements using a quo warranto complaint written in the correct parse syntax grammar, the court loses jurisdiction while engaged in criminal activity under Title 18, 1001. Title 18, 242, deprivation of rights under color of law, and Title 15, Section 1692E for false and misleading statements. They lose jurisdiction under Title 42, 1988 for committing a crime, and under Title 42, 1986, which is knowledge of the crime, did not stop and correct it. So therefore, that makes them all who participated and signed the warrant to be co-conspirators under Title 18, 241, and witness each other under conspiracy, which carries a 10-year, $10,000 fine for each one that would sign and witness. So we're acting, we have organized crime acting as the police force or as the judiciary here on the island. Because I would have to syntax what has been wrong, write the lawsuit under Quo Ranto, and then send it to the court to show them the criminal acts that they did, send it to the police department, file a claim with the, uh, with the sheriff's department that the court has issued fraudulent documents and then notify the Department of Justice in Washington, D.C. that organized crime has taken over our courts. Okay? okay. That's black and white, folks. I, I can't get any clearer than that. What they're going to do is they're going to come back and say, we cannot understand what is correct. We can only understand what is fiction. And if you believe that, then you're going to, they're going to want you to participate with their fiction. Don't. You can continually sue them for the correct parse syntax grammar for the avoidance of perjury. And they can't ask you to commit perjury or join with their perjury because that's a crime. All right? Your volition, folks, when you go to get something, there's a thing called closure. Under maritime law of contracts, you must have closure for the word terms in the documents, for the criminal charges or what the laws are in the documents. In other words, you have to have a dictionary attached to your document. You cannot, if you have abbreviations, they have to identify what the abbreviations mean. It has to be all written out in the correct parse syntax grammar, not adverb verb. So don't think that you are at fault. You have to push them to give you closure on everything they do or they do not have jurisdiction. And if you syntax any orders or any judgments, the word judgment means opinion, and opinion is not a fact. The word order is O-R-D, a vowel and two consonants, it means no contract. It's written in the same format of no contract language. So if you continually sue them to be correct, they have to vacate. Any other questions? Well, we have a Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, uniform commercial. C is the lender. C is the lender? Yeah, on this one. Um, and this lender is in bankruptcy and has been out of business for, since 2005. When you hand me a document, I also go in and I research the history of that lender to see who bought them and how many times they've been traded. And my own parents, my mother and father, their home was bought and sold 14 times in 12 years. They never knew who actually owned the house. I mean, who they had a mortgage with. And even though they never missed a mortgage payment, according to the fifth person who had bought it and traded five times before their payment from number one got to number five, started foreclosure because they never got the money was forwarded to them. Even though they kept selling the mortgage over and over and over again, so they, they buried it. The point I'm trying to make here is that the document was written 40 million times to be fraud. Well, 
so that they go out and harvest the people. This was a setup from the get-go. MERS filed bankruptcy in 2002, never paid money, never received money, and never signed a contract. When the Department of Justice went to MERS for bank fraud, they said, for what? We never signed a document. We never, they were using the, our name, and we're in bankruptcy. We don't have any connection with any of the banks since 2002. They re reformulated in Delaware in 2012 but they still have not signed any mortgage contracts. They do not take money or pay money. They have no continuance of evidence to be appointed. That, that would be like me appointing the, uh, the cameraman here to sell your house because I appointed him to sell your house even though there's no continuance of evidence. And then he gets to keep the money because I appointed him. That, that would be completely crazy. How can you be a nominee and a mortgage? Can't. They can't, they can't be the mortgagee for the simple reason they never signed anything. But that would just be another layer of fraud. It's just another layer of fraud that they put on there to confuse a person who doesn't know what's going on. And you went out and you sued, sued MERS, and the, and, the, and the judge comes back and says, well, you sued MERS, and they're not here in court today, so we've got to continue this, or we can't move forward. The judge fully knows that none of MERS has never existed in the first place. I can stop you right there because that is written just like this sentence up here. If I send text that specific law and it has not been corrected in the correct parse syntax grammar in now time, all four billion laws written in the United States codes are say absolutely nothing. When I presented that to the federal court about 30 years ago, the, 30, the court came back and said, all the codes in the United States, all four billion of them, are only suggestions by which we as judges have to make determinations. And because we are the foreign vessel in dry dock, we get to say that three plus three equals seven, or eight, or nine, or 20, or anything we want it to be. They just make it up as they go along. And I've been in so many courts where the judge says to me, David, we know who you are. We know that you do syntax. We know you're a federal postal judge, but you're in my vessel now, and I'm the king of my vessel, and I will determine who lives and who dies in my vessel. And I will make any law I want on my vessel. That's what these judges tell me when I walk into their courthouses. And yet, here in Hawaii, when I sit in the courtroom, I've seen 12 felony cases get a $20 court cost and walk out the door just because I'm sitting there because they don't want to perform a crime in front of me because when I walk out the door, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to syntax it. I'm going to drop a lawsuit on them and they're going to look really foolish committing treason against the people. It's not worth it. Question. Where can we learn or start to learn how to learn? Okay, dwmlc.com has all, these, all the mechanics written down in over 400 pages of text. You can also go on, on the internet, type in David Windmiller videos. And there's over 200 hours of videos from our seminars. I've done 2,500 live seminars, TV, radio, uh, internet broadcasts, live seminars where I, I come out. We did one, uh, I think it was four years ago, over in uh, Waianae. We had 504 people show up at the gym at the high school. And that was when we announced the uh, sovereignty of the Hawaiian Islands, when we found that the, uh, we, we broke the code on when Hawaii became, uh, when it all started, when the bankruptcy started. <laughs> all right, but that's about it, folks, for our court today. Uh,